So there's two ways how you can evaluate some digital awards and drivers. So I asked Natalia to come in and to try it out. And um, Natalia, I think you just drop the irons if you're comfortable. And you want to see where does the port fall. Okay, so it's a, if I just let the port fall, where does the port fall? Does it go forward or back? And then you want to see where does the eye end. Sometimes you do this exercise and you see the foot falls in front of the eye, sometimes way behind it. Here, actually, it's not so bad. You can put, pick up your eyes again. And then, when you come around, I like you to stop between Julia and myself. Take another big circle. What I'm going to do, I have a couple of um, liquid tents, liquid chalk. And it's really good when you do this at home at Pony Club or demonstration. And just quick mark. Let's pretend we don't have the time. But let's pretend for a minute that I did walk for character both directions. Okay, so the south has, let's say, stop where it is right now. And you don't need to write long most of the time about being written for, let's say, each gate in each direction two or three times on the train. Okay, so the saddle will fall in time to this stop. And then we're going to see where the saddle will stop and where the riders Deck without stones. See if you can pass right here and then stop so that the table is behind us. Do the other couple of hands in the, on the table. You can pass me the green pen. So, what I'm going to do with the help of Natalia is uh, I'm going to mark where the leg is here. Just make one spot there and one spot there. That's where I saw the leg. And then I mark where the saddle is. I'm going to make that saddle kind of a little bit dirty, but it will wash up. The back there, and then in the front. You pull up the saddle pad. So, as as you can. And then I look for the seat. Okay, so here, a whipboard help, or something what falls. Where is this part in relationship to the horse? I will come back into that later. So I would say maybe somebody can help me. It would be there. So right there, maybe with the camera, would that be a fair spot to be? Approximately. At home, to stay away. So now if I get you to take this out off, and we're going to see how the saddle fits with all, all that stuff. Before we do it, we're going to map the horse. And map the horse is what I talked about earlier. And in the old days, they just take both the ends of the main and go eight inches down. So once we have that side up, we want to find the end of the main and you look for a spot eight inches down. Today we have horses we breed with much shorter legs, longer legs. And we breed horses, sport horses with very upright upper arms and very slow shoulder legs. And when I train a horse, just like when you have a very sloppy position, your shoulders are full. If you start a, a training, let's say you want to be a dancer, or you want to have a good posture, you grow. Growth is not because of your age, it's because of your posture. And just like you, a voice will bring the shoulders not only back, but also down. So there's several going to Earlier we had a little laser, but measures the horses into the sixteenth of an inch. We can print out the horses back. Pretty cool what science has to do these things. And it's also very good if you measure the horses back, uh, trained and ridden by that coach and rider, and the same horse measured and trained by somebody else, and you measure the horses back again. So there's tools and science we can really look into uh, a little bit more. So what I'm looking for, which I go to the end of the main, I'm looking at the furthest part of this calculus. Now, horses are not made out of sugar, don't be afraid to put a little bit more pressure now. So, end of the day, go down at least eight inches. And funny enough, in the old days, they measure the horses with their hands. This horse is 62, that horse is 51. What does it mean, 15 hands? And when they map out the horse, they use the hands as a reference point. So, king's hand, four inch wide. If your hand is not four inch, you might want to use a thumb to determine how much eight inches or four inches. Eight inches would be approximately here. And there is 
where that furthest scapular point right there is. So I'm going to make another model. Now, certain courses when the sun hits, you will see in the book that referred to the ring of light. The ring of light is when the sun hits the flame, you see, well, like the word says, the ring of light. And the reason why it shows you this ring of light, because the hairline comes up this way, and this goes this way. So they looked at the end of the beam and the ring of light. Today we talk about the last rib. There was a study done in England where they had a special saddle fitters, both high qualified saddle fitters, veterinarians, and everybody pointed out where the last rib is. In the last rib, if you are very, very good in common numbers and you have the degree and the knowledge, then it's okay. But for the average person, keep it simple. Keep it simple, look at the ring of lights, find the last rib, follow it. Now here you won't feel it anymore because of the muscles which are on top, but don't make the mistake and go straight up because if you look at the skeleton, the rib doesn't make a curve there. So you want to follow in that line the rib, right? So you just give it approximately. Then in the Western book, um, and we'll get to the title later, they call that the rain line. When the horse sweats or get rain on it, you will see where the water comes running down that thing. So what they determine is this somewhat, you don't have to be 100% accurate, somewhat in that area you want to stay away from the dark side, the circle of light. So we determined, we don't want to put pressure here, unless you would like to see this going more and more and more hollow. You want like to see the horse more and more collapse. You don't want to see this hole here. Maybe you want to pay attention to the next part because they say, take the hand width and four inch wide, stay away from the spine. So they drew a, a line four inches on the spine, put that on there, that went to the front. Make another mark. I'm going to uh, say this out and you can repeat it. Uh, but I said to everybody here, okay? Will so they make another mark at four inches? They make another mark at four inches. Another mark at four inches. Another mark at four inches. And another mark at four inches. And another mark at four inches. And then they're connected to that. Then they connect these dots. And this is the box. And this is the box. Which is the middle of the longest muscle, the longest the muscle side. Which is the middle of the longest muscle, the longest muscular side. If you really, really want to make a horse angry, if you would like to make a horse angry, <laughs> push in that triangle. Push that triangle. Just like humans, they have between the vertebrae nerves come up. Just like humans, they have nerves that come out with between the vertebrae. So if I would like to make that muscle twitch, all I have to do is hit that. Nerve. When I would, if I would like to make that muscle twitch, all that I need to do is hit that nerve. So before I go into that, think about lemon pressure. So if you think about lemon pressure, how much pressure you need to squish a lemon? A lot to get the juice up. So when they referred, some body workers call that area, saddle support area, or that area where the horse can tolerate lemon pressure. Everybody knows what egg yolk pressure is, which means how much pressure you need to do to break an egg yolk? Not a lot. How much to break a grape? Not a lot. So here, you can put a lot of pressure. You can push and the horse will know you are here, but they tolerate lemon pressure. If you hit the spinal nerves or the with a cup, you don't need more than grape pressure. So every time you hit that spot and then you need to be the eyes for the group, just watch what the muscles are doing here. See there? The eyes and the ears, they look around. But you see how that muscle flex a little bit? So if I want to really irritate the area there, the muscle flex and be tight, all I have to do, all I have to do is get the side what has a close pin fit. So if you want to go ahead and Turn that round saddle around. Remember what we're saying? We as saddle makers right, want to all sell saddles. And 
you will see, if you go to the last of different people who sell saddles, okay, they will tell you all different stories. But some of them are not voyages. Some of them are meant, maybe purposely, maybe unintentionally, sit on those spinal nerves, and you need to ride 20 minutes to make that area numb. When I used to ride five to six horses a day, that times 20 minutes, I wasted a lot of time. Plus, this hole will only get deeper. And we'll show you the minute. If I really want to make my horse angry, or go pace, I put pressure in this box. Okay, so this area here, a lot of people say, hey, wait a minute, on Western saddles fit all the way there? Western saddles are meant to carry the kitchen, all this extra stuff. This is a working saddle. And the bars, they go all the way back here, but they flare away exactly the same as on the front. We know this as a front flare and back flare. This stuff, your ears and nose are made out of, and out of cartilage. Once that is gone and broken and damaged, it doesn't regrow. I haven't heard anything yet that it does. So we know, if you want to give me the yellow uh, marker, we know that for most of you who have already attacked the courses, you know that big cartilage area right here. Once that is gone, that's game over. Take the red one off. So if I want to use, this is a beautiful girth, we uh, can measure uh, aid analysis, we can measure with this cadence, we can measure with that girth, the heart rate. If I put pressure on here, okay, that is less than a great pressure, the heart will go up. And as I said earlier, heart rate is up and the cortisol level is up in the stress. So if I have tools, by measuring elevated heart rate by just pressure again, I as a saddle make a little fitter have the chance to avoid it or hit it for whatever reason. So this cartilage here we want to protect and we definitely don't want to go and hit this here. We have another green pen. So please don't be so accurate. It's very hard to do with one point in one hand, but let's roughly see where the latissimus is. It's in that area. The pectoralis is in this area. And just like when you were little kids and you walk behind somebody and hit him on the side on the edge of the uh, latissimus or on the pectoralis, the chest muscles, the pectoralis muscle, a very important muscle for those to lift the rib, uh, appendix, the rib cage. So if you really want to take your horse off, Make sure your first part sit on that area. Okay? The length of the girth is way more important than the design of it. You will never see, never see an elasticized girth in the Western market. And you will never see a girth on the Western world which is really, really short. Yet you see a lot of precise girth. They're clear the elbow, but they're always on this side. This will go down after 20 minutes, but you really just want to trot on the elbow or you want to have the full range of motion in the shoulder. So saddle fitting for me is just stay in the green zone. In the short billets, that's where you want to have your butt. Okay? In the long billets, that's where you want to have the butt. Okay? Away from the red zone. The higher the better. If I lean forward and you look at my elbows, that is the widest part of the horse's body. And if the girth goes just below your elbows, you will see that on Western saddles. And they're rope with those saddles. They have no elastic. That saddle is very steady because why would the buckle go over a wider area? A good saddle fits like a good helmet, and a good girth sits away from areas like tickle. And when you have ticklish feet, the reason why most people are ticklish on their feet is because there's a lot of nerve in it. So if I really want to think of the well-being of the horse, then I have to think about, do I want to hit the red zones, or do I not want to hit the red zones, or in this case, the cartridge as well. So let's pretend we use science and we use all the research, and let's pretend our ancestors knew 
Why are they making the sounds the wife? So let's look at how some sounds are made. You give me the racing sound, some racing sounds, and when it comes to money, people change their opinions. Okay? Because a racing sound, what sits here, how is that racing voice coming out of the starting game? Or it's just an exercise sound, R3 sound. What if I can prove to you race trainers that the horse actually is faster? Can you pass me a metal plate with those backwards? What is actually shaped like almost every army saddle, almost every single western saddle? The other one. There is other plates which are very long and pointy forwards, and there's other plates very long and pointy backwards. So we probably don't have it with us. Maybe Sonia, if you're in the audience, you can show us. So this particular saddle sits on the wither cut. So what I like you to do at home. I pass this to you, and you repeat what I say. What? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, if you don't, say no, and then you will repeat. Once you have determined the four-inch triangle, I want you to go to the horse behind the shoulder blade, slowly start using your fingernails and your fingertip and determine how much pressure can I do before this horse starts to show a reaction. Okay, before going down, and push inwards, not forward, just into the muscle. Simulate this muscle. Okay, how much pressure can you do here before you jerk your arm? So you will see, if you're in this area here, you will see the horse tolerates a lot of pressure. You do the same on your arm. How much pressure do you tolerate on your funny bone? Not a lot. Actual pressure. So you have to do it yourself because you think this is the show. <laughs> Feel it for yourself. Horse tolerate contact here more up to laminate pressure. If I go into that, that's the triangle I was calling earlier the fuse box. You put your screwdriver into an outlet bar. So here and the horse will react. Okay? It doesn't take a lot. You can see how little you press and instantly the back drops. And who likes this to happen through the spinal process? So as a saddle fitter, I can use Sonia, did you find the other plate? Yeah. You can choose the saddle, but has very short three points. So we consider this forward, short three point. You all learned in pony club, it should be on the withers. So this sits mainly on the wither cup and on the cartilage. Or like the western saddle, army saddle, it creates the bridge, what moves away from the shoulder blade. Why so far back? Because if I lift up the leg, you saw that one slide. Okay, so we can try to do horses, bring it slowly forward. Okay? So you can see the way all the way back here to come even further. Okay? You want that freedom for the shoulder to come through. Think about a bridge. If I have a river, what's 10 feet wide? Would I use a bridge what's only 8 feet long? No, it falls into the river. <laughs> And some people, like Vince Anderson or John Lyons or Monty Roberts, that talk sometimes to the spine is a river of information or a river of energy. So if the winter cup is the river, you need a bridge what is at least 10 feet wide. So if you don't want the edges of the <coughs> river banks to break, why to make the river not a, the bridge not a little longer? So analogy is, <coughs> if the gun plate in the tree is longer here, like a western saddle, then you don't have pinpoint pressure. You're bridging the wither cup. Does that make sense to you guys? So for us, I don't understand personally why silence gets made resting on the wither cup or on the cartridge. You already learned, close pin split. That saddle will not roll. And that's how it fits every horse. If for you, all what you need is 
one pencil. A pencil with pen base. You put the saddle on the horse, you want to pass me the saddle. You put the saddle on the horse where you believe it should fit. Just by walking, that's where it stops. Right? So if you believe it should fit behind the shoulder, you already can see I'm in that last week, what I call bucking reflex point. So if I want to make a saddle, what pushes here to make this deeper, to keep the hind leg away, then I pull and put pressure here. If I put the saddle in front of the boat, I'm not wearing the saddle in this Then I'm on the way here, but I'm on that shoulder blade without even putting the saddle on. So I'm going to push this back where it should be and pull you to this. See that? That not the face is all the Okay, so if your pen is free through here, then you know the wither cup is not pitched. If you don't learn anything today, I hope you remember the mapping. Okay, so we handed out those little uh, booklets. Um, we have also printouts for my PowerPoint presentation still out here or out there. Or email us, we email you the PowerPoint. It's a very, very easy way. All you need to remember four inches, where is the end of the blade, where is the furthest part of the shoulder blade. If that makes sense to you, stay on the middle cup, draw a four inch triangle. If that makes sense, then you want to stay on the spine. Average horse, four inches wide, width of the longissimus muscle. Average width is 4 inch. It just did it very rough. I was Paul Hall, who is a very famous dressage rider in Germany. He learned how to hold in the Swiss Army blanket to put contact on the green box to stay away from those. You can also feel the edge of that muscle on some horses, some horses can. So, what I like to show now is the pelvis. So, where are we going to sit? Every single rodeo rider sits as possible to the base of the wind. Every single rodeo rider. Why? Least amount of bucking. And if I listen, I can put the saddle away and maybe show the back here. This here is only three inches. Ah, it's okay. It's, it's good enough. Good enough is exactly as bad in saddle fitting as half pregnant. Pregnant <laughs> or not pregnant. So, if you say, oh, look at that, that's too heavy. The last two are the worst. If you look at that. If I hit that spot, that goes up. You see how that comes on? Okay. If you enjoy having this horse glitch foot going for half an hour, <laughs> then it's good enough. If you want to have this free leg, okay, and you're just striking this right to the shoulder line at a high point, going to the side, right? So this end goes right to the leg. And you can see that. Can you repeat what he's saying back there? You were talking that way, so we could. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, as I said, half pregnant, if this is good enough, that's only in the back narrow. If you look at old saddles, the back was actually the widest because if you ride around trees or ride around corners or if you love ladder work, the tree doesn't bend. And the tree swings to the outside. That's why the back is actually the most important to be wide. So, if you want to mess up the area here, go half break. Don't want to mess the area up, flip the saddle upside down, does the fist fit in there? It's easier to put more socks in the shoe, the shoe is quiet. Okay, so the width of the spine is absolutely important. Now if I'm going to put this person on here, you can see these are the pubic branches on the side and the pubic surface. Look on top. Here, this is the guy who can put his parts left or right. He sits very close to the base of the horse. If 95% of my riders in English and 75% of my riders in Western sit at the same balance point of the horse, look at the top of the vertebrae. The first one hits is your pubic symphysis. Then you roll on your part. By the time the seat bone sit, look at the top. That's why in the book of Joyce Harmon and other veterinarians like uh, Nancy Nichols, when she put 
the different pelvis longer horse, it is, and you push your butt a little bit over, it is absolutely difficult. If you write bare back, and there's numerous tests done, gait analysis, computerized sound pads, you as a lady will never sit here upright. You will ride like this and push your way. Okay? I didn't make the rules, I didn't build pelvises, and I didn't <laughs> build the <laughs> spine of the horse. But what I did do, I listened to vets, osteopaths, veterinarians, all different parts, as well as physiotherapists or human and medical doctor who say, if you want to make two spines aligned, just walk a little bit around. If you want to have two spines aligned, a vertical of the human, which has four curves, and then you have two more, sorry, three more joints here, here, there. If you want to be a soft rider, 